On a crisp autumn day in 1958, the Seagram Building opened its doors, instantly captivating Park Avenue. This modernist masterpiece, designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Philip Johnson, stood out with its sleek lines and bronze-tinted façade. Crowds gathered, their eyes wide with awe as sunlight reflected off the towering structure, giving it an almost ethereal glow. The building's innovative recessed placement, set back from the street, created a striking plaza that enhanced its grandeur. This thoughtful design not only set a new architectural precedent but also influenced the future of skyscraper construction worldwide, emphasizing open space and urban integration. The Seagram Building's creation is intertwined with the story of the Bronfman family, a Canadian dynasty whose journey from poverty to immense wealth is a classic rags-to-riches saga. The Bronfman's vast fortune originated from the Seagram Company, an alcohol distillery that became a household name during Prohibition. Founded by Samuel Bronfman, the company thrived by legally exporting spirits to the United States during the dry spell. This bold move turned Seagram into a global spirits empire, significantly increasing the family's wealth. By the time the Bronfmans sold Seagram to Vivendi in 2000 for a staggering $34 billion, they had already diversified their empire into real estate, the music industry, and technology. At the helm of this wealthy empire is Charles Bronfman, with a net worth of $2.5 billion as of 2023. Charles not only continued the family's business legacy but also became a notable philanthropist, co-founding Taglet Birthright Israel, a program encouraging Jewish youth to visit Israel. His charitable contributions extend across Canada, the US, and Israel. Edgar Bronfman Jr., Charles's son, transitioned the family fortune into media and entertainment. As the former CEO of Warner Music Group, he played a pivotal role in guiding the music industry into the digital era. Under his leadership, Warner Music embraced digital platforms, ensuring the company's adaptation to market changes. Edgar orchestrated the sale of Warner Music to Access Industries for $3.3 billion in 2011. The Bronfman family's story is not without its controversies. The family's wealth and influence brought them into the spotlight, linking them to various scandals, including connections to Jeffrey Epstein and international spy organizations. Despite these controversies, the Bronfmans continue to be one of North America's most powerful and wealthy dynasties. As of 2024, the Bronfman family's legacy and wealth remain formidable. From their beginnings as struggling farmers to their reign over a multi-billion dollar empire, the Bronfman's journey is a testament to resilience and strategic brilliance in the face of adversity. The beginnings of the Bronfman dynasty. Let's delve into the next chapter of the Bronfman family's rags-to-riches saga. The first patriarch who laid the foundation for the family's immense wealth was Samuel Bronfman, born in 1889 aboard a ship en route to Canada. Emerging from the depths of the Russian Empire, Samuel and his parents were Jewish refugees escaping the brutal pogroms of Tsarist Russia. These pogroms were violent riots aimed at persecuting Jews, often with the support or indifference of local authorities. Fleeing this oppression, the Bronfmans immigrated to Wapella in Saskatchewan's district of Assiniboia before moving to Brandon, Manitoba. The name, Bronfman, itself is closely associated with Jewish families of Russian and Romanian ancestry, deriving from the Yiddish word, bronen, meaning liquor or spirits. This ironic twist foreshadowed the family's future in the alcohol industry. Samuel's parents, once prosperous in Tsarist Russia, arrived in Canada with their rabbi and two servants. Samuel's father, Yuchil Bronfman, initially struggled with tobacco farming in Canada's harsh climate. To survive, Yuchil worked as a laborer for the Canadian Northern Railway and later in a sawmill. The family eventually moved into trading firewood and frozen whitefish, which sustained them through the winters. This led them into horse trading, and by 1903, the Bronfmans had purchased a hotel. Recognizing the profitability of alcohol sales, young Samuel established himself as a liquor distributor. In 1924, he founded the Distillers Corporation in Montreal, specializing in affordable whiskey. During Prohibition in Canada, Samuel and his brothers cleverly navigated the stringent regulations by disguising alcohol sales under medicinal labels. His strategic foresight to stockpile whiskey prior to the repeal of Prohibition in the United States positioned Seagram to capture the pent-up demand for quality spirits, drastically altering the liquor industry landscape. In 1928, Samuel's vision led to the acquisition of Joseph E. Seagram & Sons, which fortified his company's market position. This move was a prelude to broader expansion, seeing Seagram extend its reach into wines, rums, and whiskies, establishing a formidable global footprint. Parallel to Samuel's business exploits, his wife, Sadie Rosner Bronfman, championed numerous philanthropic causes. She played a pivotal role in the Young Women's Hebrew Association in Montreal, supporting Jewish women's empowerment. Sadie's efforts extended to founding the Canadian Youth Aliyah and supporting the arts through what became known as the Siegel Centre. By the 1930s, Samuel had redefined whiskey from a bootlegged good to a premium product, introducing rigorous standards for bottling and quality control. This fostered a new level of consumer trust and brand loyalty. 
The era following World War II was marked by strategic growth through acquisitions and diversification. Seagram expanded its portfolio, collaborating with European liquor brands and entering new markets like rum, solidifying its status as a powerhouse in the global beverage industry. A defining moment in Seagram's history, and indeed in modern architecture, was the construction of the Seagram Building in New York City in 1958. This $41 million project set a benchmark for office towers worldwide and left an enduring legacy in architecture and urban planning. Samuel Bronfman's legacy was not just about business success but also about philanthropy and cultural contributions, which have continued to influence and inspire generations.